What is up guys, Awesome Nerd Show here, back again with another Monday Night Rewind, going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars, covering Raw and Nitro from 1997. And so this week we're going with September 8th, 1997 for our two episodes, and we are back to two episodes now, we have Raw and Nitro this week. Um, but before we get started with that, at, if at any point during this video you are liking or enjoying it, please leave a thumbs up, leave any comments you have down for me um, below if with any help or critique or any information or anything that goes along with this. And then if you enjoy all this and want to come back for more, be sure to hit that subscribe button to come back each week to catch a new episode of Monday Night Rewind. So today we're going to start out with Raw like we used to do before there were no Raws. And this is Raw 224 and again it's September 8th, 1997. And it took place in Cincinnati, Ohio. And so the show opens up with a recap of Ground Zero. So the pay-per-view, September's pay-per-view of Ground Zero took place the night before. And so we get a recap of what happened. So one of the things is um, Brian Pillman ended up beating Goldust. The Headbangers won the tag team titles um, because of a Stone Cold run-in during the match. And then the Patriot won by um, DQ, I believe. It was Kind of questionable of how we won, but I believe it was by disqualification. And from there, we get into our first part of the night. And so it's Vince McMahon in the ring for an interview, and he calls out Sergeant Slaughter. And so Sergeant Slaughter comes down, and he's talking about Ground Zero, and he's saying, you know, that last night Ground Zero was utter chaos, and that he's here to lay down law and order in the WWF. And so he starts going through some stuff that he's enacting and like putting in place or whatever. And so first thing is um, that Stone Cold will be suspended until um, doctors say that he can wrestle so you know he's pretty much sending him home so he doesn't get injured anymore and because of that they're have holding a tournament for the intercontinental title that will be you know like the tournament will be ending at bad blood at the october pay-per-view and that austin must be there to present the winner with the intercontinental title so at this point he had the intercontinental title and the tag team titles and so that's why during the tag match earlier it said stone cold ran in because since he obviously wasn't able to compete in the match uh other people had to take the place and stuff and so he still interfered so that um, british bulldog and owen hart wouldn't win and so after sergeant slaughter says you, you know saying all this stuff about stone cold being suspended he ends up coming down to the ring and he comes and saying you know that he will break every law and that no one will be able to stop him and that he, he will deliver a can of wool past the sergeant slaughter to slaughter's front door if he you know does suspend him and like he'll just do whatever he wants and so after a stare down and stuff like that stone cold ends up delivering the stunner to sergeant slaughter so this is towards the beginning of stone cold actually um, beginning to attack other or like officials and stuff in the WWF and then after that he starts yelling and chasing after Vince McMahon but he ends up chasing him out of the ring so then Stone Cold's left alone in the ring and he's in the ring holding the belt posing with and stuff and people like security and um, other agents and stuff behind the scenes or whatever came out and you know like tried to stop Stone Cold from getting the vents and everything and to take care of Sergeant Slaughter. And then from there we get into a replay of Ground Zero where Stone Cold did the stunner on JR. So that was, I believe, the first person that he did the stunner to. And then also Sergeant Slaughter at Ground Zero. He did both of those together. And then after that happened, security ended up trying to kick Stone Cold out of the building. And then from there we get into a replay of the Friday night's main event. So again, those were the shows that took place since there was no um, show on Monday due to the tennis or whatever that was going on. And so they end up having these main events on Friday but as I said I wasn't able to find him to watch him uh, but we got a replay of the whole um, on the two episodes of Vader and Bret Hart like feuding interfering in each other's matches and I think they even had a match together or something but so tonight they're gonna have a match and it's uh, gonna be a no holds barred match and so that comes up next so we have again Bret Hart versus Vader and it starts off with Bret delivering a promo saying that America is a land of disgraced heroes and he mentions people like Pete Rose and I think some other names but I didn't know who they were. So the match starts in a first uh, Bret Hart uh, attacks Vader with the his title so that kicks off the match but shortly after Vader is able to get the upper hand and then he hits Bret with the title and then after he knocks out Bret Vader goes over and grabs a Canadian flag that's on the um, corner post and he picks it up breaks it over his legs and then takes a piece of it and starts hitting Bret with it but then they get thro um, thrown outside and Bret starts attacking Vader with 
get the um, steel ring steps. And as this is happening, British Bulldog comes walking out on the ramp and he just stands on the top of the ramp. And then so as the match continues on, Brett's being dominated by Vader pretty much the whole time. So Vader, you know, has the upper hand until Brett goes with a low blow and hits Vader in the balls. And so that, you know, gets Brett the upper hand, but not for long because Vader ends up grabbing him and hitting a power bomb on him. And then he goes for the Vader bomb. But as he's, you know, climbing up the um, ropes to do the Vader bomb, British Bulldog comes running down to the ring and stopping Vader. And then from there, Brett and Bulldog end up double teaming on Vader until the Patriot comes running out to help out Vader. And then since Patriot's out there, Owen Hart comes running out to help as well. And at this point, Brett goes out of the ring and he grabs the chair and comes in and starts attacking Vader with the chair. And then um, Owen grabs a hold of the Patriot and he goes to do a pile driver along with Brett and Bulldog. So they have like their hands helping lift Patriot up and everything. And they're getting ready to, Owen's getting ready to pile drive Patriot, similar to how he did Stone Cold, but on the chair this time. And because of that, Stone Cold comes running out um, and saves the day. And so there's no, not really ever a finish to the match. So I don't know exactly who wins or not. Cause, and they never declared who won, but I would assume probably Vader because Bulldog came out and attacked. So it would have been a DQ and with the win going to Vader. From there, we get a backstage little video and it's Sergeant Slaughter in like, kind of like a locker room or a uh, fitness, I don't know what you call him, but like uh, where the doctors are. And he's got um, ice on his neck, like has a bag of ice on his neck. And he's just super angry and like getting mad and like pushing, shoving stuff and slamming doors and everything. So he's super mad about, you know, being stunned by Stone Cold. And then from there, we get into a recap of another recap or replay of Ground Zero, um, this time on the or this time covering the tag team match, talking about or showing, you know, how the headbangers won. And then from there, that leads into the Godwins coming out for a in-ring, or they come into out to the ring, and they challenge the headbangers to a match tonight, even though there was no match schedule and everything. So the headbangers do end up coming out. So they have an unsanctioned match. So just like commentary says it's unsanctioned because the match was never signed or anything. So who, no matter who wins, I don't think the titles will change or anything. But the match is uh, pretty boring for the most part until the end where um mosh ends up uh doing i think it's called like the whoopee cushion so he like jumps off the top rope onto the guy's chest like sitting on him uh, but he does that on phineas and he's going for the pin but the ref is distracted because uh thrasher and henry are in the corner fighting and so while that's distracted a third godwin member ends up coming in and attacking mosh with a horseshoe and then we later find out that it's his name is uncle cletus um but after mosh like attacks or gets attacked with the horseshoe phineas is able to get the pin on or i believe the pin I, I didn't write what happens but i'm pretty sure i feel he gets the pin if not it was a disqualification like the ref saw but i'm pretty sure it was a pin so the godwins end up winning and then security starts going for uncle cletus because they think you know he's someone from the uh, ring or the audience because that's where he came from and that he's just a fan and the godwins have to go out and like kind of push off security and probably say you know you know he's a wrestler and stuff like that which uncle cletus is played by the I believe, I believe by the way he looks, he's played by the guy that was a TL Hopper, so the plumber guy for a short while. And then so after this, JR ends up coming up uh, to the Godwins, the question, you know, who this man is. And they say, you know, he's un our Uncle Cletus and that he's here to watch the Godwins back because of everyone, you know, attacking each other and all the different chaos going on in the tag team division. And then from there, we get into a recap or replay of, again, Ground Zero, but this time the Gold Dust and Brian Pillman match where we, you know, we see the stuff where Brian Pillman ends up winning. And then because of that, Marlena then has to become Brian Pillman's personal servant for 30 days. And so that leads to some interesting stuff coming up. We then get into a match of what's supposed to be Do Love versus Brian Pillman. And this is the first match of the, um, Inter Ice Inter Intercontinental Championship Tournament. And so to start off, uh, Sonny ends up coming out and introducing the match and that it's the first match of the intercontinental championship tournament and then do love comes out first and um he gets on the mic and does a promo and he says that um to have someone to watch his back he's bringing out a good friend and he brings out gold dust and so gold dust comes out to the ringside and then they're waiting on brian pillman but then there's a phone call that comes in over the speakers and it's brian pillman on the phone and he's talking about that uh that he doesn't feel safe in the wwf and so he's wanting quarantine safety but they can't but they can't give him to yet so he's staying home until then and then he's 
he's talking about uh, how he has um, some videos for Gold Dust that he's recorded. So they play the first video of Pillman's X Files, but I think it's like Triple X Files. Um, and so it's a video of him in a hotel room, and he's saying that how he's exhausted and that he had a long night, and he's showing, and he so he picks up the camera and starts walking around showing the destroyed hotel room with like lamps and chairs knocked over, clothes thrown everywhere, just showing that some ruckus stuff went on the night before or whatever. And then he's saying that part two will play later tonight and so no match ends up happening because he's not there. Then we get into our next match which is kind of a fun one. It's a minis match of, I don't know how to say the name, but it's like Perita Morgan, so it's like Pirate Morgan. And versus Max Mini, which is the cutest person, little um, mass wrestler I've ever seen. He's kind of like uh, El Torito from a few years ago, but he just wore like an all blue and yellow um, outfit. Kind of looked like an X-Men almost. Um, but there starts off with a replay of the match at Ground Zero, where it shows Max Mini running around the ring. And he runs over and jumps into Jerry Lawler's lap at commentary. And he grabs Lawler's crown and puts it on his head and stuff. So the whole time, Lawler's just like completely disgusted and creeped out by Max Max Mini and making fun of him the whole time. And so as Max Mini's coming out, uh, Vince, you know, says that he's the smallest athlete in the world. So he has like that record, I guess, going or whatever. But the match goes on and it's very entertaining and Max Mini's just so cute and funny. Like I said, it's like a little kid, like a little toddler out there fighting, but it's just a little person. So at one point, Pirata Morgan or whatever goes up for him to do a moonsault, but Max ends up moving so he misses it. And then Max ends up hitting a top rope drop kick and then rolls Morgan up for the win so Max gets the win off out of this match. We then get I believe it's JR at commentary or whatever commentary team making the um s sitting there making an announcement saying that the Undertaker and Shawn Michaels match there that they'll have a match coming up at Bad Blood and it will be the a Hell in a Cell so be the first ever Hell in a Cell match and then we get a recap of Undertaker and Shawn Michaels feud you know starting at SummerSlam and then their match at uh, Ground Zero, which they're doing a Hell in a Cell because during the match, people like Rick Rude, uh, China, and there were a whole bunch of other people. I don't know if they interfered or if they were just there because I know at the end they tried to separate Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, and so there was like the whole locker room was out there trying to separate them. That's where we get Undertaker during doing his what I like first televised, at least that I know, of, uh, dive over the top rope onto them. Um, but because of all that interference and stuff, that's why it's going into a Hell in a Cell. And from there, we get Vince calls Undertaker out for. Uh, an interview in ring um so undertaker starts off by um, saying that he gives credit for sean for being able to face him last night and standing up to him as much as he did facing him without fear and that there's um with this whole hell in a cell match that there's no way in or out of it and so that sean will have to face the reaper as he calls himself a lot and so at, because of this sean michaels ends up interrupting on titan tron backstage and he's saying that you know if he's going down that he's taking undertaker with him and so but that's pretty much all he says and then goes away and so that ends that segment we then get sunny in the backstage in the locker room and he's in her or she's interviewing the heart foundation and she's um, talking about Owen having a match and he's saying that um, the British Bulldog and Brett will be there to protect him in case Stone Cold comes out for interference and then that leads into our next match of Owen Hart versus Goldust and so this is now going to technically I guess now the first match for the Intercontinental Tournament and so from the beginning of this Goldust is very like mean angry and aggressive of course from the Brian Pillman stuff and since he's angry and starts so weirdly Owen Hart wrestles the entire match in his leather jacket that he wears but Owen's able to get a, the upper hand with a low blow and uh, Goldust then ends up returning it later in a little or a short while after with a low blow on Owen uh, multiple times in a row and the ref obviously sees it this time and so the match gets called off and I, so I believe Owen wins because of that because DQ because you know Goldust is doing low blows which are not legal and so because of that Brett and British Bulldog end up running into the ring and start attacking on Goldust and then Stone Cold runs out and clears out the ring and he's holding a broom the whole time so he's like trying to hit the guys with a just a weird broom and then he starts uh like like up in the ring, point, standing out, point, looking at commentary, and he's pointing out at Vince, yelling at him, and then he takes the broom and throws it out at commentary and stuff, and then he ends up leaving through the crowd. I think he picks up the broom and takes it with him too, but he just walks back through the crowd to the back. Then next up, we get Brian Pillman calling back again for the part two of the Triple X Files, and this time he's, you know, saying that uh, Marlene is in the shower, and so he goes into the bathroom of the hotel room and the 
showers running and you can hear or on like the glass shower door you see like i love you or something written on it in the steam fog stuff on the window and uh brian uh, makes a comment about how um he's gonna have a hard time getting to sleep tonight if you know what i mean and stuff so insinuating that you know she's kind of like a sex slave to him now and so that's what all their stuff is about we go back to another interview in the heart foundation locker room this time they're, I think they're just talking to Vince at commentary. Um, but they're saying, you know, that Stone Cold should be fired and that Owen Hart will win the Intercontinental title back is pretty much all that um segment is made of, like the most part. And then Bulldog mentions stuff about his match with Patriot. So next up, we get Patriot versus Triple H, of course, coming out with China. And then they were supposed to have someone else in the match. I can't, I don't know if it was... I can't remember who it was supposed to be, but it ends up becoming a uh, British Bulldog. He like takes the place of whoever it is. And so it's supposed to be a three-way match. Um, but as the match gets ready to start, Savio Vega comes out to sit on commentary. And he's talking about how he won his the gang war match against Farouk and Ch- Crush at Ground Zero. And so because of him being able to do that, he thinks, you know, d- deserves a future title shot. So that's why he's out here for this match. And so as... Like I said, as people are starting to come out, Triple H and Shawn Michaels and we're trying to attack British Bulldog as he's coming out to the ring. And so they start attacking him and injure his leg more because he already has a brace on his leg. And they just like pick his leg up and slam it on the ramp and stuff. So injuring it more, taking him out of the match. And because of that, Savio ends up replacing or joining the match to replace British Bulldog. So from the start, Patriot and Savio Vega are just double teaming on Triple H, obviously, since they're two faces. Go- well, I think Savio's face or whatever going against the heel of Triple H so they're just double teaming him. Shawn Michaels ends up coming out on commentary and ends up giving Vince crap the whole time you know about just the way he's been treated and everything. At one point during the match, the Patriot ends up hitting the Uncle Sam, so his, or Uncle Slam, I don't know exactly what they call it, but his finisher, but uh, as he's going for the pin, Savio Vega ends up interrupting, and then at one point, it's kind of funny, they, all three of them end up getting each other in headlocks with their legs, so where they, like, you know, wrap their legs around the head. So, Patriot is on Savio Vega, and then Savio is on Triple H, so it's just, like, a whole chain of headlocks or whatever. Then at one point, there's boring chants throughout the crowd, so even back 20 years ago, there's still boring chance and then triple h ends up going for a pedigree so this is a whole thing that continues on multiple times triple h goes for a pedigree on the patriot but Savio does his spinning heel kick, but as like to hit Triple H to interrupt, you know, pedigree. But as he's going for it, Triple H ends up ends up ducking, and Savio hits the referee instead. And then Patriot flips, does like a backdrop to Triple H, and then Patriot from there goes to um get the pin on Triple H, but there's no ref to count the pin. And then later on, Triple H goes again for the pedigree this time on Savio, and as he's doing that, the Patriot climbs up the turnbuckle. And uh, Savio ends up countering the pedigree and shoves uh, Triple H into the, or catapults Triple H into the turnbuckle, which then hits the Patriot. And the Patriot then gets racked up on the top rope. So Savio and Triple H continue fighting on, and Savio h- hits the spin kick on Triple H and then goes for the pin, but the ref is still out. And at this point, Shawn Michaels gets up on the d- apron and starts uh, distracting Savio, and he's messing with Patriot and stuff. And Triple H goes for the pedigree again, but Savio reverses it into a backdrop. And then from there, Triple H pulls on uh, Savio, like on his, like grabs his like belt or something on his pants, and just pulls him and it like pulls him into the turnbuckle. And then he and Patriot end up doing like a meeting in the minds or whatever, so their heads hit together. And then Triple H rolls Savio up from that, you know, the headbutt. And then the ref is slowly gaining consciousness at this point, and ends up counting the three, but he does it very slowly. But he does get the win. And then so- Shawn Michaels ends up coming in and attacking Savio. And while that's going on, China on the outside grabs chairs and throws them in to the ring because the Los Bariquas end up coming out and Vader ends up coming out so Sean and Triple H with the chairs are able to you know keep the guy from getting into the ring and if anyone gets up they end up hitting him and then at the very end before the show turns off the Heart Foundation members end up walking out on the top of the ramp and then that's how the show ends and from there we go into Nitro and this week is number 104 again from September 8th 1997 and this one took place in Milwaukee Wisconsin and this was supposed to be a two hour just normal two hour Nitro but towards the end they end up saying a thing that TNT has allowed them to you know go over as long as they needed so it almost becomes a 
three hour nitro i don't know the exact time because obviously it's on the network with no commercials and stuff um so the whole big thing for this nitro is that um fall brawl is going to be on sunday so we have fall brawl and at fall brawl there's war games so it's all building up to that stuff so the show opens with the nitro girls dancing in the ring which no one cares about and then it goes to commentary where they're discussing um war games coming up sunday and then the four horsemen parody from last week and how it's disgusting and that thanks to wcw that footage will never ever be seen again and then while they're saying that eric bischoff then comes out walking over to commentary and then he says that using or then with the power that eric has or whatever and you know with as high in the company as he is he tells someone in the truck to replay the parody. I call it a parody because I don't know what else to call it, but obviously where the NWO were dressed as the Four Horsemen and acted as them and did the whole Art Arn Anderson retirement speech and stuff. And so, as I said, Eric uses power and then they play the thing again. Of course, upsetting commentary. But like halfway through it going through, um, the Four Horsemen actually end up coming out and they interrupt commentary and because of them coming out, Eric Bischoff ran away. And then um, they said, you know, they're tired of all this and that they are choose they want NWO to fight right now. And so the Four Horsemen end up going to the ring and then they're in the ring waiting for NWO to come out. But instead, Mean Gene ends up coming out like to interview and talk to them. And um, Flair says, you know, that NWO disgrace, what they did last week was a disgrace to the name of wrestling. And that Arn Anderson is a true legend. And the, the NWO members, uh, you know, like wish they would, could have a career like Arn Anderson has had when they're, you know, been in the company as area in wrestling as long as he has. And they say, you know, we're not leaving until the NWO comes out there to face him. But security ends up coming out, um, forcing the Four Horsemen to leave the ring so that the show can continue. And they are guaranteed they're like a match tonight or whatever with some of the members between two teams. And then we get into our first match tonight, which is Eddie Grove versus Rey Mysterio. And so at the beginning of the match, um, there's an Eddie Suck Chance, so again, more Sock Chance or whatever, still going on 20 years later. Uh, the match was overall pretty good, obviously, with both Rey Mysterio and Eddie Grove. Um, Ray's doing a lot of high flying moves and stuff. He is doing a lot of like botches or whatever, or somewhat botches. Like he'll go to like you know jump up onto the top rope with both feet or something, and his feet will slip. But every time he messes up, he's able to still save the move by going in, like doing something else, like not doing the move he was going for, but like still getting a move off. So he's that's like you know his skill and everything that even though he's trying to do high fly moves and they get botched he's able to save the move to do something else at least. Um and then of course the whole time Ray selling his injured knee that we you know talked about weeks ago. But the match ends up when or ending by Ray Mysterio getting the pin off by, by doing a springboard hurricane rana or hurricane I don't know what the difference if there's a hurricane rana or hunican rana but uh Mike Tanay calls it hunican rana so he does that to get the pin off Eddie by because he doesn't rolls Eddie up and stuff and gets the pin. From there we go to the Nitro Girls for an in or dancing in ring and then um, as it's going there's a Nitro party ad of course where you can get the Nitro Girls and Mean Gene and all sorts of stuff to come to your house. And from there we get a Mean Gene interview on the ramp with DDP and he's saying that um, you know he and Lex have butted heads and that if they can settle it with words they will but if not he's willing to settle it in the ring. And then Lex ends up coming out to, like interrupting whatever and saying that if we're gonna do this I'm gonna bring you know he's like if we're gonna have a match Match. I'm gonna bring the best I got so you better bring the best you got and so they agree to a match that ends up is the main event for the night our next match is Disco Inferno versus Hugh Moore so continuing on with events from last week where Disco interrupted it and uh, attacked or whatever and or distracted Hugh Morris with in his match with Alex Wright and so um, of course from the very beginning Hugh Morris is being very aggressive against Disco Inferno and like you know really beating him up a lot. Alex Wright ends up coming out to ringside and Hugh Morris ends up attacking Alex when he gets up onto the apron and so he beats up Alex Wright and then he goes back to Disco Inferno and he does the power bomb on, bomb on him and then he goes up to the top rope to do his moonsault um, but as he's doing it Alex Wright ends up throwing his title belt into Disco. I don't know exactly why or what he's going through and Disco's like just sitting there holding it like what do we do with this and Hugh Morris does his moonsault and he lands on top of the title which or on top of Disco which had the title in between them so it's you know like supposedly hurt Disco even more. I was kind of unsure what was going on whether it'd come up of Hugh Moore selling the title since obviously 
Alex Wright threw it to Disco and they have kind of like a connection. And so he would have ended up injured off of it, but it actually supposedly injured Disco even more. And so Disco ended up getting pinned off of that or whatever and losing the match. And then afterwards, Alex Wright gets in the ring getting his title back and Disco's up getting angry at him yelling at Alex like, why'd you do that and everything? And that's how that match ends. Next up, the NWO, pretty much the four horsemen people. So we had six, Kevin Nash, Conan, and Buff Bagwell coming out to the top of the ramp and they deliver a promo saying that, you know, they did the skit to show the horsemen how stupid they've looked for the 10 years or whatever they've been together and that they accept the horsemen's challenge to a match tonight. So again, like I said, that that will come up later with a couple of the members. So next up is our match of Brad Armstrong versus Chris Jericho. And so towards the very beginning of the match, um, Eddie ends up coming out to the ring, interrupting. And from there, Brad Armstrong ends up attacking Chris Jericho off of the distraction. And then Eddie interrupts the match again, I think, during a pin or something. And Chris Jericho ends up winning by uh, DQ because Eddie obviously attacked him. Then we get into hour two of, um, obviously kicks off with the Nitro Girls and they're dancing on the ramp. And we get a recap video of Hulk Kogan doing his attack on JJ Dillon and so because of that they say that a new general manager will be named tonight so we'll get that coming up later of finding out who the new I said general manager but I think it's like chairman or whatever of the company that JJ was we get an interim one and so from there Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff end up coming out to the ring he starts off by saying you know that again like Scott Hall usually does that everyone is here to see the NWO and then WCW there will be no more crybabies and Hogan's saying, you know, that he's the man and stuff. And so he's laying out a list of stuff that's going to happen. He says, number one, no one touches Eric, will ever touch Eric Bischoff again. Number two, Conan and Buff will take care of some business tonight for him, which we find out is in the match against the Four Horsemen. And number three, that he will defend the title against Sting and he will do it right now. And so the crowd starts going crazy and we see a Sting come down from the rafters. But it, when he's about like halfway down, it ends up like dropping super fast. I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? And and uh, it turns out that it was a dummy sting because like when it goes over to it, his legs are all bent in all sorts of weird directions and everything. So it's like I said, a whole dummy sting and stuff. And so of course the whole time Hogan's like goes over to the sting is yelling for help to come out. And then like an EMT with a stretcher ends up coming out. But obviously they never load him up or anything. And then during this whole time, Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton end up coming out and they like take control of the sting. So they're like picking him up and holding him and stuff and get him into the ring and everything. And so they're in the ring holding him and Hulk Hogan starts talking to him and he's uh, uh, you know saying things stuff and like slapping it in the face and then he, it's like you want a match you get a match or whatever and so he starts wrestling with it like punching it and everything and like knocks it down and then he does a couple of leg drops and then he goes for a pin and Eric Bischoff is wearing a ref t-shirt so it must have under a jacket or under a shirt or something had the referee shirt on and so he's got that and he gets on the ground and he you know, counts the three and ends Hogan ends up winning or whatever and saying you know that was Sting's title match and that ends that segment we then get our Lee Marshall road report coming from Charlotte North Carolina so again that's where Nitro will be next week and from that we get into a match of the Faces of Fear so Ming and Barbarian against the St Steiner brothers and they of course come out with Ted DiBiase. Um, so pretty much as soon as the match starts uh, both members of each team so Ming and Barbarian and the Steiners are all fighting each other in the ring. It's not you know one person with each team as it should be and during this whole time the Steiners end up doing double belly to belly so each I'm doing on whoever they're fighting and so then that like gets the actual match to start type thing. And so Throughout the match, uh, Scott Steiner ends up hitting a belly to belly, doing a belly, overhead belly to belly to Barbarian off the top rope. Because right after that, he goes for the pin, but the ref is distracted. Before this, Rick and Ming started fighting in the corner of the ring. So like, or in the, they're in the ring and they start fighting during like during the part before before uh, Barbarian went up on the top rope and Scott did the belly to belly. And so he's distracted with him, so they don't get the pin. But as this is going on, Ming ends up hitting or grabbing Rick Steiner with the tongue and death. Grip. And so as Scott's pinning Barbarian and Ming has Rick in the tongue and death grip, Wrath and Mortis and Harlem Heat end up come running out to the ring. So they interrupt and then all the people just start fighting with each other. And so there's no ever or never any ending to the match. And obviously there's a disqualification, but I don't know who got the disqualification and who won. We next get Super Callow versus Scott Steiner. So 
This is, as you'd expect, pretty much just a squash match. Um, Scott Hall ends up doing a fallaway slam off the top rope with Super Calo, and he wins then by doing the Outsider's Edge off of that. And then Ray Trailer ends up coming out to the ring immediately after the pinfall, and he confronts Scott Hall, and so they start fighting each other, and he picks Scott Hall up and does the spine buster on him, laying him out. And then after that, uh, Vincent Cunt then comes running out to help, but Tra Ray Trailer, which again is Big Boss Man, if you didn't know. And then he does the side slam onto Vincent, who came running running out to help and then while he after he does that Hulk Hogan ends up running out with the distraction on Ray Trailer and while he's doing that Scott Hall ends up attacking him from behind and then gets the Trailer up into the outsider's edge and uh, hits that on him and so while he's out they come in and spray paint Ray I think they spray Ray question mark you couldn't really see but that's what commentary said it was it says Ray question mark so Ray who on to his back and stuff ending that segment when they get the Nitro Girls dancing up on the ramp leading into our next match of Psychosis coming out with Sonny Ono against Dean Malenko and commentary mentions that the winner of the Dean Malenko and Jeff Jarrett match which will happen at Fall Brawl will end up getting a US title shot at some point in time so as this match is going on a fan ends up getting into the ring and when he does mark the referee mark curtis ends up grabbing the guy in the headlock and ends up like holding on to him until security hand him and so this is a video i've seen on uh stuff of where you know it's like compilations where rings or fans get into the ring and it's kind of, it was funny at first because i you know didn't recognize the stuff but i've seen this before but the guy was wearing an outfit very similar similar to the ref so i just thought it was the second ref and i'm like wait why are the two refs fighting each other and i had no clue and then i realized Realized what was going on and so the wrestlers were pretty professional like Dean uh, had psychosis just over in the opposite side of the ring just holding him over there fighting the whole time and he just would like turn his head every now and then like just to keep an eye on what was going on but like I said security comes in there and gets the guy out and so they just take care of that um at one point uh, Sonny ends up trying to kick Dean Malenko while he was had been thrown outside of the ring but Dean ends up catching his leg and like getting ready to attack him and stuff you know Dean's got his leg and Sonny's like waving his hands like no don't hurt me and stuff but psychosis ends up coming out interrupting and so Dean never gets to hurt Sonny or anything and at one point during the match something ends up happening to the crowd but it's never shown but all the crowd is like standing up looking over too so with the camera facing the way it normally does it would been to the right so the opposite side of the arena of the ramp and stuff and like I said you never see anything that happens no one ever comes running in or anything so i don't know if it was another fan thing or what was going on for sure um but dean malenko ends up getting the win with the texas cloverleaf and after that jeff jarrett comes out to the ring challenging dean malenko to a match right you know to see who will get the u.s title shot um he challenges him to the match right now but as he's doing it dean malenko just starts walking towards jeff and jeff ends up running to the back and so the match never happens the Mijin comes out to to the ring to present the new acting chairman to replace jj and it turns out that it's Ron Piper and so he comes out and saying you know that he's here to lay down the law and that he's gonna control the wrestlers so it's similar of him doing this just like Sergeant Slaughter is in WWF right now and so he comes out with a list of stuff and he's saying you know number one that he will make a match between Hulk Hogan and Sting before the end of the year number two that Hogan will be in a match a steel cage match with him Roddy Piper at Halloween Havoc so a year from their last one because he said the contract just for the last year's Halloween so he can have a chance again at this year's Halloween Havoc and again it'll be in a cage match and then number three the NWO will be in a match against the Four Horsemen at War Games or in the War Games match at Fall Brawl and he just says he's uh, because of DDP and Lex Luger's issues that he's taking them out of the War Games and putting the NWO or the Four Horsemen in so I don't know exactly what the match was supposed to be in the first place because all I ever knew that the match was going to be was NWO versus Horsemen and I never heard him say who the actual competitors were in the match anyway so he took like I said DDP and Lex Luger out. We then get a commercial for or an NWO commercial for a new NWO t-shirt. It says I think it's like breaking bones and rules or something like that. Some sort of shirt some, along those lines. We then get what they're calling a double main event or whatever and this is Conan and Buff Bagwell so what Hogan was talking about and they're going against Ric Flair and Kurt Henning on Four Horsemen so again it's NWO and Four Horsemen getting at each other and so the Horsemen immediately come out or they come into their match really hot and aggressive especially after last week's skit of making fun of the four horsemen but as the match continues on buff and you know is able 
I think, fighting with Rick. And he's able to keep up with everything. So between stuff, he's posing and doing woos and everything. So just kind of making fun of the whole things the whole time. Uh, at one point, Buff Bag winds up hitting a superplex onto Ric Flair from the top rope. And then later on, Conan is distracting Kurt Henning and Buff attacks his leg from behind. So they're working on Henning's leg, trying to get him down and, you know, take him a wheel off of him. But then at one point, Ric Flair ends up getting Buff Bagwell into the figure four. And as he's got that, Conan comes in to break it up. And then as Conan comes in, Kurt Henning ends up coming in. So they're all just fighting together. And then uh, Ric Flair ends up getting thrown out. And Conan and Buff Bagwell are double teaming on Kurt Henning. And they go to do a bounce off the ropes. And as they're doing it, Ric Flair grabs onto Buff's leg, tripping him. And Kurt Henning ends up catching on to Conan and does his fisherman suplex on him. So the four horsemen get the win there. Then there is a commercial for the Nitro Prize. So this is more like professionalized commercial like you'd you know see during commercials and not just commentary mentioning it or whatever like has been in the past couple weeks and from there we get into our main event for the night which is the match of DDP versus Lex Luger so this obviously to settle their feud or try to at least or whatever before fall brawl and so there as the match starts uh, Lex Luger's pretty much just dominating the whole match the whole time and then at one point the NWO ends up coming out to the ring and it's uh, Scott Hall uh, Macho Man Randy Savage Scott Norton Vincent and Miss Elizabeth all come out to the ring so at one point Lex Luger then uh, DDP is able to get Lex Luger and throw him out of the ring and when he does that Scott Norton uh, starts attacking on him and then from there DDP is able to get the upper hand for a while and then but Luger finally gets it back again and then DDP throws Lex Luger out again one more time and this time more of the NWO starts attacking him so it's kind of a weird dynamic going on here because throughout the match uh, the NWO is cheering for DDP they're saying like you know let's go DDP hit the diamond cutter and everything so it's like they're in support of DDP and they keep attacking Luger so it's just showing that you know they're like on his side but as they're beating up Lex Luger this time uh DDP ends up jumping out of the ring and helping Luger and so they all um fight back into the ring so you know DDP and Lex against the NWO members and then the giant comes walking out to help Lex and DDP and he ends up clearing the ring most of the members out or all the NWO members out of the ring and he starts fighting with Scott Norton and they kind of just fight to the back or something because they they were fighting and then he just disappears and you never see him in the background or anything and so the remaining NWO members start trying to get up on into the ring. I think it's just Scott Hall and Macho Man at this point. But as each one tries to get up, Lex Luger and DDP knock him off. And so they're preventing him from getting into the ring. And so since they're not able to get in, Scott Hall and Macho Man end up leaving. And so as they're leaving, they grab the cheese head. So like the like hats that look like a cheese uh, triangle that someone, people have spray painted silver and have put NWO on and stuff. Because as this was going on, people started throwing trash into the ring. And someone threw two of those into the ring. And Scott Hall and uh, Macho Man ended up grabbing those. And they put those on their head as they're walking out. And so Lex Luger and DDP are standing in the ring. They stare at each other. And then they shake hands and hug. And so it's showing that they've kind of buried their problems. And that they are back together now on the good side for WCW. So that's going to be it for this Monday Night Rewind episodes of Nitro and Raw. Again from September 8th, 1997. So again, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a thumbs up. Leave any comments you have down below and hit the subscribe button to be able to catch a new episode each week on the weekends. But do all that and we'll see you next time. <laughs>